Hello there! OpenAI's Clip and Dali have been out for centuries now. <laughs> what? Centuries? <laughs> Miss Coffee Bean, it's been only three weeks now, but I think you all agree with us that three weeks in machine learning feel like a century. Meanwhile, Google published the switch transformer of one trillion parameters. Transformers generate music, transformers generate 3D dance motion, transformers detect 3D objects, and the list goes on and on. So let's stay cool and avoid being overwhelmed. In a previous video where we discussed OpenAI's DAL-E, we found out that it is great at generating images from natural language, and it might look like creativity, especially when combining concepts like armchair and avocado. To make sure that DAL-E's generations are fitting the description well, OpenAI employed a separate model called CLIP to rank these image generations after their similarity to the text. And if you don't know about DALI yet, check out our video about it linked in the description below. It's worth it. In this video, we will talk about this helper model of DALI called CLIP. But do not be deceived by us calling it a helper model. It is more than impressive also on its own make sure to stay until the end where we will show what amazing things people already did with CLIP. CLIP stands for Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training and yes, the paper has a different title altogether. <laughs> anyway, based on the paper we will be answering the questions. What can CLIP do? What are the ingredients for its success? What are the limitations of CLIP? Because there are some. And what can we mortals do with CLIP and what applications already exist based on CLIP? Because in comparison to DALI, CLIP was already shared by OpenAI. CLIP is very good at telling if an image and a short piece of text belong together or not. But why do we even want to know if a given text and image fit well together in the first place? Well, because this task formulation is general enough to derivate many other tasks from it, like image recognition on ImageNet, for example. The task there is to classify images, and this is what neural networks have been doing so far. They take all available classes in the dataset, here the dog races, and up to thousand other classes, and assign a probability for each class. The highest scoring class is the classification prediction of the model, here King Charles Spaniel. But with CLIP it gets even better. Because of the way it was trained, CLIP is not restricted to the classes from the dataset, but knows virtually all English words, being able to formulate the ImageNet classes into prompts, containing more language than just the classes. And here we already see why CLIP has the potential to be so much better than its competitors. Firstly, it can also model the notion of photo or image or satellite, extending its capabilities far over a restricted set of classes, showing great zero-shot performance on unseen datasets. Secondly, CLIP is during training never restricted to reduce an image to a single concept or word. Therefore, it never loses or forgets other aspects of the image that are not captured in class, like the grass or wood on the background. Impressively, but not perfectly, CLIP can solve tasks and datasets it has not explicitly seen during training, like optical character recognition, geolocalization, texture detection, and others like facial emotion recognition and action recognition. It is impressive zero-shot performance for a model trained only to predict the similarity between a text prompt and an image. Then what are the ingredients of CLIP's success? Here we have to say that the employed ideas are not really novel. There are a lot of ideas used in the CLIP paper that were already used in research. And OpenAI's merit is definitely that it managed to put everything together in a fine piece of engineering, which CLIP is. Entally. 
Yes, the zero shot capabilities of Clip are impressive, but not unexpected. We have seen it happen too with GPT-3, trained on huge amounts of data with high variance. Clip has been trained on 400 million images with paired text descriptions. This is 100 times more data than ImageNet and it is uh, very diversified data too because it was all scraped from the internet. So the first ingredient for the success of Clip is of course the data. The more data the better and the more diversified the data the more we can expect the model to be able to perform afterwards in zero shot. Then on this data it was trained like this. The authors take a batch of images and a batch of their corresponding textual descriptions. The images are encoded by either a ResNet or a transformer and the text is encoded by a transformer too. Then for each image in the batch, the encoder computes an image vector. So the first image corresponds to the vector i1, the nth image to in, and the same happens for the textual description. The first textual sequence is encoded by one vector t1, the nth description by tn. Then the magic happens, <laughs> n-square similarities are computed between all these images and text vectors. This means that the diagonal elements of this matrix should be all maximized by clip, as i1 fits with t1, i2 with t2, and so on. Then, in a contrastive fashion, the off-diagonal elements should be minimized, since we assume that it is really unlikely that an image i1 fits with a random other description other than its own. And that was the second ingredient of the success of Clip, is the idea of predicting similarities between images and textual descriptions and training in this contrastive fashion. But the idea is not new at all, because we have been seeing this idea in multimodal transformers as a pre-training task, like for example in AlexMert, Wilbert, VisualBird and so on. So this is sadly some piece of related work that we think the authors did not acknowledge enough and didn't compare to well. The third element that the authors advertise Clip with is its computational efficiency. Especially when these image and text encoders are transformers, we know that a lot of computations can run in parallel compared to LSTMs, for example. But do not confound computational efficiency with data efficiency, especially with transformers that do not have inductive biases that help during learning from little data, they need more data to learn well, so they are not that data efficient. So the fourth ingredient to Clip's success comes from the image and text representations gained during training on the given data. Clip now trained to predict high similarity for fitting image text pairs and low similarity for random ones is ready to be applied on various tasks like image recognition. We remember image recognition only has one word to describe one image, Clip rather likes more words, like a description, so the authors create a prompt, a photo of a, and then they insert all possible objects, creating as many prompts as there are objects. Then they compute zero shot, the similarity between a, say image net image and these prompts that differ only in the mentioned object. Then the prompt and object with the highest similarity is chosen as prediction. And the same clip model performs really well, not only on the classical ImageNet image recognition challenge, but on many other tasks with different kinds of images or styles, because first it has seen these image styles during training, and secondly it has seen the words to describe these kinds of images and their details. Okay. So Clip can do so much, and it is time to see what the limitations are of Clip. Here we must refer to the limitation section of the Clip paper, because it is the most entertaining limitation section we have ever read. We include the passages we refer to and cite, so you don't think that the used language is really ours? No, they really, really formulate things like we show them here. So. 
The authors make clear that zero-shot clip is competitive with the baseline of a supervised ResNet 50 model trained specifically on the training set of that dataset. And this is impressive because it means that clip trained on OpenAI's dataset of 400 million images absolves us a little from training specifically on tasks and the datasets associated to them. But here the authors warn us that it is still work needed to beat the supervised baselines, but this work can have limitations if it is done how the authors did it so far. They warn us that if we scale the model and the data like they did so far, we would need a thousand times more resources in compute, which is infeasible with current hardware. Then the second limitation they tell us about is that while Clip is performing amazingly on some zero-shot tasks, it is not amazing on all tasks. <laughs> we cite, the performance of Clip is poor on several types of fine-grained classifications such as differentiating models of cars, species of flowers and variants of aircrafts. And Clip has also trouble with abstract and systematic tasks such as counting the number of objects in an image. Clip has also trouble with tasks that are unlikely in the pre-training dataset. By saying that Clip has troubles generalizing to out-of-distribution images. And they illustrate with an example of optical character recognition where Clip is really good at recognizing digitally rendered text but has troubles with MNIST which is a dataset containing handwritten digits. <laughs> And the reason the authors can identify is that there are a lot of digitally rendered text images in Clip's training data, but not so much handwritten digits. And Clip kind of fails to generalize from digitally rendered text to handwritten text. And kind of the next limitation they address is that Clip is not a caption generator model. It can only tell you how a given an existing image and an existing text fit together, but it cannot really compose new text. And also a very beautiful formulation, Clip also, I cite, Clip does not address the poor data efficiency of deep learning. Instead, Clip compensates by using a source of supervision that can be scaled to hundreds of millions of training examples. So Clip didn't solve any of the deep learning problems, but it kind of shows a bigger hammer for solving the problem. Okay, but now that we know what the authors found out that Clip cannot do, let's have a short look at what people have been able to do with the Clip model that was released by OpenAI. And the first application we want to show you is this one by lab member 001, who was able to discern between grainy, noisy photos and high quality photos. He could really nicely formulate in natural language because Clip understands that. So in a sense, Clip can be used as an image search engine, as for example, Vladimir did, who used Clip to retrieve car images, but it gets even better. He could retrieve even more detailed things like car driving in the woods. So this is the best thing about Clip. You can describe the model very detailed what you want. And you can retrieve pictures like this one where it's raining cats and dogs. And also what I really liked is this example of <laughs> detecting chemical elements in pictures. Clip delivers us similarities or scores between an image and a text, so it can be easily used as a discriminator in a GAN. Here is a super nice example of a Montreal image. Find the links to the tweets we have shown you so far in the description below. And also in the description, please find the link to this Google Colab released by OpenAI, where you get working code that you can explore in your own applications. There are detailed instructions how to download and initialize the model. And then there is even an example how to calculate similarities between images and pieces of text. And also how to create your own ImageNet-like classifier with Clip. So you can play with Clip on Colab yourself. Do not forget to find all the links mentioned in the description below. Let us know what cool things you have created with Clip in the comments and see you next time.